Hello and welcome to our latest edition of How the Hell Did I Get Here show with Rachel and Meg. Uh, Today on the show, we have Constance Walter. Constance is the communications director at the Sanford Lab. The Sanford Lab is a a world-leading physics laboratory underground. Um, My estimation of what happens at the Sanford Lab in a very non-sciencey way is they send uh, particles that we don't know exist, actually, um, through the Earth's core to another made-up lab (laughs) in another place underground near Chicago. so um, so Constance is responsible for a really important thing up there, making up all these stories to share with the public. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But we I, when I worked at the mine, we always had a good laugh about what they were what they thought they were doing underground and what we actually knew we were digging out of the earth. So that was kind of always our joke. Um so Constance has had lots of opportunities in her career, uh, one of which I just can't Uh, help but uh, talk about a little bit is she got to meet one of her childhood science heroes, Buzz Aldrin. That is way cool. Um, She says going to work every day is a treat because she gets to work with people from all walks of life, former miners, brilliant scientists and engineers, educators, students, and many others. Uh, She's also uh, done her time, if you will, in uh, journalism and entertainment as a marketing consultant uh, running her own business and representing a regional entertainer and producing concerts. Uh, that's not everything that's in this bio, but holy crap, there's so much here. I'm going to stop um, and let Const- welcome you to the show first, Constance. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Great. Well, we'll start off with our uh, our question. We always ask: Tell us about the moment um, or series of moments where you kind of looked up from your own life and looked around and thought, how in the hell did I get here? Yeah, I think I've done that probably uh, 857 times in my life. Because I have had so many amazing things happen to me. And, and I'll, I'm going to go back a few years to when my, my youngest child was just still in the womb, actually. And I said, what the hell am I going to do with my life? This shit is not working out for me. I was, I was not happy. I was working in the restaurant industry. And this was back in the 80s. And it was tough to make it as a woman in the restaurant industry. I was working in a really fancy hotel as the manager of this really nice restaurant. And I was making less money as a manager than the cooks on the line were making because they were all men and I was a woman. And I thought, I'm not living this way anymore. I'm not doing this. And I was talking with a friend of mine who had four kids and she said, you know, you're pretty smart. You should try going to college and doing something with all that brain power you have. And I had always thought about going to college when I was in school, but didn't know that I was smart enough to do it. Didn't really know that that it was an option. So at the age of 28, I was holding my, my fourth child, who was about two months old, while I was enrolling for college courses at the local um, community college in Bismarck, North Dakota. Best decision I ever made. So that was that was probably the greatest aha moment I ever had was you can do better than what you're doing and you can accomplish more than what you have. And you have four kids who need you to do that. So that's, that was my first aha moment. And then, you know, as I, as I kind of went through my life, you know, I got into college and my whole point was I'm going to be an accountant. I'm going to make money. I'm going to get an MBA from Harvard. I'm going to just be amazing and rich. And then I took cost accounting. So that was another aha moment for me. That dream died big time. But in the meantime, what I discovered was that I was a good writer. So I, I, I started writing. I started doing theater. I started. 
uh, giving talks and I was, you know, uh, doing things that I never thought I, I got involved in, um, in, uh, as a student activist at Dickinson State University in Dickinson, North Dakota. Uh, there was, um, this leftover sort of, not sort of, it was a very racist, um, uh, homecoming ceremonial, the vestiges of their days as the savages. And uh, I got involved with a, with a group of, of people and, and we said, we are not going to be a part of this. We are going to make a change. We're not just going to pretend it doesn't exist anymore. Now, I will say this about Dickinson State. Back in the 70s, they were one of the first universities in the country to say, okay, we're going to get rid of that very derogatory name but they kept the, all of the, the, the trappings of the name. So finally in the, 90, in the early 90s, they did all the right stuff and changed it and you know, made some good choices. And so you know, I, I got involved in, in, uh, in politics. I got involved in all sorts of different things and, and found that I had a lot more talent than I ever knew I had. So yeah, another big aha moment. I, I love it. I um wanted to share because I know you personally. Um I uh, love the the how the hell did I get here moment that I personally know about Constance, which oh. is um when you go underground just well, back so you, in the just day, so you know folks, this is a story also uh will be a surprise to Constance because oh, yeah. Rachel did not tell did not it. prep her and Meg has never heard it. I've never so heard it's a big story. surprise. Oh, oh Constance will recognize the story sure. once I start down the path. So um, well, so the lab that, that Constance works at right now is almost a mile underground. And I don't know if things have changed, but when Constance first went up to work there, um, if you went out of the populated areas, there was nowhere to pee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell all the gory details, but I'm sure Constance had a few how the hell did I get here moments <laughs> underground? <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm not, you know what, at my age, I, I just lay it all out there. I'm not afraid to talk about it. But yeah, I was disgusted. Uh, and, and I will say this, Rachel, this was one of the funniest things because I remember we were walking through yet another dank, dark place and I looked down and my hands were filthy. Now, I used to play football and baseball and all that other stuff when I was a kid. But since I've grown up, I find no use for that stuff. Um, I like to have my hair fixed. I like my makeup. I like to be clean. So I look down and I go, oh, my God, my hands are just filthy. And I'm walking with my hands up in the air. And I'm, I'm just sort of like, Ugh. and Rachel says, knock it off. You're giving all of us women a bad name when you do that. And so I think you would be amazed to know, Rachel, that now um, I've gone into places where I lost a boot in muck and, um, and I didn't even panic. I actually t love to tell the story about, you know, having to put my foot down without a boot on in mud so I could stabilize myself. And um, yeah, a long way. And I use the porta potties underground now. Oh, good job. Well, the, the other thing that you're supposed to use way in the back is the piss ditch, which is where all the men would go. They'd just have a ditch that ran all the water out of oh, the sure. drift. So, no, I know, but I'm sure it's been um, updated quite a bit. Um, but back when it first started, it literally was the old mine for a lot of the underground space. So mm -hmm. that was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it has come a long way. And, you know, it's um, it's such an exciting place to work. Um, because there are so many, in addition to stories like the one you just told, there are um, so many amazing things happening um, in the world of science. And there are so many things happening um, that are changing uh, the way engineers approach projects, um, especially underground, as we prepare for this international mega science project. Um, some of the innovative ways uh, we have to approach excavating 800,000 tons of rock and moving it from a mile underground to the surface and over into the open cut 
there are all these um, engineering and um, geological feats that we have to uh, think about and um, and solve. And it's it's really exciting to be there. Yeah, I just love it. And I think um, we'll have to have you back on the show when you're after you stand in the new cavern. And I'm sure you'll have another how the hell did we get here moment, even though you're living it, right? Well, one of the things that we do on the show is we we say, well, Constance took our culture type assessment and it turns out she's a fixer, which means that she loves team and loves uh, chaos, is chaos tolerant. And so when you look back across the arc of your career, Constance, do, how do you think being tolerant of chaos has um, either helped or hurt your path? Well, I'll tell you, I think... Um... I think that the whole idea of chaos, you know, when people think about chaos, they think about it as being out of control. That, that the, oh my gosh, if your desk is a mess, you don't know what you're doing. Um, um, my daughter gave me this beautiful uh, illustration for Christmas. It's, it's an image of an octopus. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I happen to love octopuses. And um, It says, creative minds are rarely tidy. And I love that. I have it actually at work um, because I I think that's kind of how I I think. I have a lot of things going on. I see great big pictures. And where my team comes in, especially, I I have to just say this. I have the most amazing team on the planet at CERF. I have just this amazing group of people who... Are, uh, whose minds are a little bit tidier than mine, although we're all a little messy because we're all very creative people. But we all have different strengths. And I think that's what I love about team thinking and teamwork is we all have these different strengths that when we combine them, we can just do these amazing things. And so I don't think of, of the chaos that goes on in my mind as a bad thing. Um, Because out of that chaos, I have learned to be very flexible in my thinking. I have learned to accept the fact that I have limits to what I can do. I have learned um, to understand better what I can do and when I need um, the help of other people. And I have also, I think, from that learned to really appreciate all the uh, wonderful gifts that other others in my on my team have brought to uh, this project, and so I I think for me working in a collaborative atmosphere has really made me a stronger person. It's made me a better manager. It's made me a better person, and. Um, so yeah, I I think I think chaos can be a really good thing. A really good thing. I uh, amen. I'm also a fixer and for me if I don't have I love that you said that you've learned how to be collaborative and kind of lean into your chaotic tendencies because I think that I think when we fight them is when we become disenchanted with our role or we are not as fulfilled and I think so leaning into it and finding those partnerships and collaborations that can support that and and you can all work together is like is like kind of a magic moment. I I would have to agree Rachel and and I I can't uh, again I think the best results I've ever had and no matter what my job was no matter where I was whether it was in a, the restaurant industry whether it was working on my own it was when I reached out and worked with other people that I had some of my greatest successes. And I I like to think that it um, it has benefited them as well, because I also think of myself as the kind of person who uh, I like to mentor uh, people. So um, when I feel like when I can um, sort of delegate something to someone else who who wants to learn, I'm giving them an opportunity to um, expand their own skills and. Um, create their own chaos, I guess. <laughs> right? Order yours a little bit. Oh. Well, I could probably sit and talk to you all day. I think we'll have to do a follow-up episode uh, for sure. 
Um, but staying true to our not sucking up too much time from other people's lives, we are going to be done with this episode of How the Hell Did I Get Here? Thanks so much, Constance, for joining us. We really enjoyed visiting with you. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. We'll yeah. talk soon. Lead powerfully. James the world.